God bless you. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I hope y'all, I can, it's dark back there. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a different look. I had to look and make sure I was, we were up there on the screen. Praise God. We thank God for each and every one of you being with us today. For our persons who are in our audience live and you are able to come live, just please uh, uh, wear your mask and, and we pray that you are vaccinated. Uh, and we thank God uh, for uh, each and every one of you. You can go back to that other angle if you want to. I'm good with it. I just, I just won't use to it. But we just thank God for all of you being here and those who choose to be able to come and be with us. Please come and be with us whenever you can uh, for our Bible study, uh, which is our, our noonday and evenings. And we thank God we only have a live audience at 12 o'clock. And then we don't have a live audience at 645. So we thank God for each and every one of you. We've been dealing uh, with, with renewing our mind. And we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to pray for our, the families. We pray for all that are sick and shut in, those who have had uh, deaths in family. Uh, Reverend Timothy Carmichael and Reverend Vonda Carmichael, we are praying for them. Uh, services for last week, Brother P Peter Manigault, uh, one of our members, also last Friday, his services. And then we are praying for Reverend Paula Young, who lost her dad yesterday. And uh, we are praying for, for her, and we're praying for many. We're praying for Sister Berna Ray and the Ray family, who uh, lost their brother uh, also on day before yesterday. So a lot of things going on, a lot of death, a lot of sickness, but there's a lot of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. So we just thank God for that because God is still able. So we thank God for you. We want to let you know that we're having our harvest festival that is coming up. We don't celebrate Halloween here at Simon Temple. Now, if you decide to, uh, to celebrate Halloween, that's your business, but we don't celebrate it. But what we do is we have harvest festival. That's going to be on the 30th. And you can go to our website at simontemple.com, and we just need for you to be able to, to uh, participate. We're going to have drive-through candy. We're going to have COVID testing, COVID vaccinations. Everything's going to be there. If you have not gotten your booster, go get your booster. Those of you, how many of y'all got your booster already that's in here? I, I'm, I'm not jealous, but I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way. Uh, Brother Kelly, I'm feeling some kind of way because these folks got their booster. And I've been talking for weeks about boosting. And Cape Fear, you ain't came to give me my booster yet. Talking about I need a, talking about I need a pre-existing condition or I need to be 65. Uh, I'm 52 and I need my booster. So y'all get me a booster. And any of y'all got a hookup, let a brother know. As long as you don't get it from Pookie and Ray Ray, we all right. But uh, uh, get your vaccination. Get your booster. Pray about it. And after you pray, go to the pharmacy. Go to your doctor. If you have health conditions, please check with your doctor. Some people can't because of, 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 of pre-existing conditions, but some can. So please check it out. You've got to take charge of your health. The Bible says, I would that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. And we want to be around to be able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I just believe that the Lord has allowed us to be able to have this vaccine that we can go further. Also, get your flu shot. Um, I know people are getting leery about that, but, you know, the flu kills many people, not as much as COVID, but it can kill too. Get your flu vaccine. We'll, my wife and I will be getting ours this week, and our children will be getting theirs. And, uh, you know, I pray over that just like I prayed over the uh, COVID vaccine. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. So we're going to take care of that. So please get your vaccines, flu, and your COVID, and your booster. Amen. We're going to deal with uh, the, the, the uh, step three. If you don't have this Bible study, you can go to simontemple.com or look at God.org, and you can pull this down, and our Bible studies are online. We're going to deal with step three, and that's called deception. Deception. Now, deception is something all of us go through, but you've got to understand it is so important when you're dealing with the mind. We are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then sometimes we have knowledge, but we get deceived. We don't get deceived because we have to be deceived. We get deceived because we allow ourselves to be deceived. Uh, fool me once on me. Fool me twice on you or vice versa. And we've got to understand something that the enemy wants to be able to get you all the time. So we talked about it, that he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life and have it what? More abundantly. So what that more abundantly means, you've got to get your mind renewed. 
So we're going to deal with this today. Uh, we're on page, uh, well, I don't know what page yours is, but it's called deception. Everybody got it? Step three, deception? All right, okay. So we're going to go with it today. And, and as we deal with that, I want uh, 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 Brother, brother uh, Kelly, I want you to get for me uh, Genesis 3, excuse me, 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16. And, and I want your mother, which you have trained to be able to come up in the word of God, I want you to get uh, Sister Yaden to do James 1.14. James 1.14. Brother Dockery, I want you to get Revelations 12.9. Revelations 12.9. Revelations 12.9. And media ministry, well, I know y'all are back there doing something. Brother Doctor, if you'll do something for me, grab that mic right there and then uh, get that over to uh, brother, uh, brother, uh, brother Kelly and over to uh, Sister Yates, and then we'll bring that mic over to you. And since y'all are not on camera, you can keep your mask on or take it off. That is up to you. But uh, uh, we're, we're still, oh, she got one. She got one. I'm sorry. So, Brother Doctor, you keep that one. Uh, do a mic check on that one, uh, Sister Yaden. Amen. Just pop it on the top. Amen. You're going to be doing, uh, I, I tell you what, you do Genesis 3, 1 through 4. You, uh, Sister Yaden, you do Genesis 3, 1 through 4. And then I'm going to have uh, brother, uh, brother Kelly, I told you 1 John 2, 16, right? John, first John 2 16 all right 2 16 and then brother Dockery Revelations 12 9 no I gave you James 1 14 right okay Revelations 12 9 who did I give James 1 14 uh, you do that one too all right so sister Yane is going to start out with Genesis Genesis 3 1 through 4 Genesis 3 1 through 4 then everybody will go into first John 2 16 then we're going to Revelation 2, I mean, uh, James 1, 4, 1, 14, and Revelation 12, 9. So that way everybody in our virtual audience, as many people watching us virtually, they'll be able to follow along with us as we get the word of God, all right? So first we're going to do uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 4, and they may have that in the media ministry that we can put it on the screen, okay? So it's on the screen right now, all right? Now the serpent serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And said unto the woman, Yea, has and he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. All right, so this is what he does by deception. He replaces God's truth with his lie. So that's the deception, or that is the deceiver. What he will do is replace God's truth with, with his lie. Watch what he said. God had already told them if they eat of the tree, then they were going to die. Now watch the subtlety of what he does. He says, you will not surely die. Now you notice how that one word puts in there. And brother, doctor, you good because you're going to be the next one coming to because they got a mic over here. Thank you, sir. So, so you will not surely die. Well, what's the difference in death and surely death? So now he puts a word in there. And he's trying to be able to say, you will die, but understand something. You're still going to have eternity, but there's eternal, there's two places of eternity. There's in heaven and also there's in hell. But notice he, when he says, surely, he does not give him that, them that option. So when he says to her, you will not surely die. So then in the mindset, if your mind's right not renewed, you say, well, God said I would die, but well, I won't surely die. I can't really be that bad. Well, death is death. But as I said many times over the last 20 years I've been here, there's, there, there's spiritual death and natural death. Natural death, if you live in Christ, you'll live again. But if you're spiritually dead, you're dead to the things of God because you can't understand the things of God because your spirit is not able to comprehend it. So everyone who's saved has a decision to make 
whether you're going to listen to the word of God and every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God or whether you're going to surely listen to what he says. Because notice what the enemy will do. He'll always put an option. God, does, God gives you either you are going to live life abundantly or you are going to perish. So then the enemy will come in and say, well, he knows your heart. You're really not going to perish. What it means is you're going to have some rough days, but you ain't going to surely perish. It's either live or die. So you've got to be careful what he says. You, well, you can go ahead and um, y'all know I got a problem with speeding. And I'm getting, uh, Sister Olive, I'm getting delivered. Amen. It's, it's been about 20 years, but I'm getting delivered. It, some things take longer than others. So if I say if I'm on 95, that I'm going to speed up so I can get around somebody because they're going too slow, but they're going to speed limit. Well, it'll be all right. I'll go around them. I'm speeding to get in front so I can go somewhere. I still was speeding. So when people say, you know what people say now? Well, well, uh, uh, you can, uh, if, the, if it's 70 miles an hour, well, you know you can go five miles over. That is not what the law says. That is not what the law says. So if a police officer stops you, if a police officer stops you going 74 or 75 or 71 and the speed limit is 70, he or she has that right to be able to stop you. But you're going to say, I heard that you could go five miles over. Then he or she could say, that ain't what the law says. So when God gives you a commandment, he said, here's the line. You don't make it up as you go. Because while you say it may be five, I've heard somebody say you can go nine miles. Because nine miles will keep you from getting on your insurance. Or you can go 15 miles, and the police officer will only write it for nine. You see how the lie keeps perpetuating itself? And after a while, you done paid cost of court, you done paid for a lawyer, and you done paid more for your insurance company, all because of a lie. You need to ask yourself, what lies do you believe that the enemy has told you that God told you they were contrary. And everybody goes through that because you say, uh, uh, the Lord don't mind me getting them back. But the Lord said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He didn't say it was yours. So we've got to watch what he deceives us because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he'll take that out of your mind. All right? Somebody just say, I'm not going to be deceived. It's easier said than done. Because as soon as somebody pull your chain, you got to be very careful that that cussing demon don't come back on. <laughs> Ain't but one or two of y'all got a cussing demon, amen. Or, 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 or things that will destroy you because then you will start using saying, well, he didn't say I couldn't, but only in moderation. Well, where's the moderation at? You got to know where the moderation is. So I'm not debating whether what you know, Don't nobody email me. Y'all email me the most. Don't email me about drinking this week. I don't need to debate with you about whether you can drink or not. What I'm saying is you got to know where your limit. Because those of you who have drunk before, you know that that limit gets blurred real quick. Moderation get gone. When, when, you, feel, when you feel inebriated, you've gone over mo uh, moderation. But y'all ain't never been drunk, so it's all right, okay? Yeah, right. Okay, let's keep going. 1 John 2.16. Who has 1 John 2.16? 1 John 2.16. All right. Speak in that mic. Your mom trying to keep your mic, mic from you. All right, go ahead. There you go. They got it on there. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life come not from the Father, but from the world. Mm. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the what? And the pride of what? Of what? Comes not from the Father, but from what? You've got to understand that the world makes a different standard that is not a part of God's word. So the world will always try to deceive, and that comes from the spirit of lies, which comes from the enemy. So what they do is try to be able to deceive you, or the world tries to be able to see. That's a spirit. That's an influence. So when you say you're under the influence, we talk about by alcohol or drugs, but a lot of times people are inoculated or seduced by sin. So when they're seduced by sin, notice everything that comes into, for everything in the world, 
the lust of the flesh. So that's why we got to put our flesh under subjection because our flesh will make us write checks our behinds can't cash. And the lust of the eyes, just because you see it don't mean you need to have it. And the pride of life comes from not from the Father, but from the world. The Lord had no intention for us to be in competition with one another. But the enemy will make us be in competition with one another. Starting to be able to make our flesh want stuff to be able to compete with people or to be able to have what we think we should have. Just because you think you, uh, just because you're able to obtain it don't mean you're supposed to have it. Amen, somebody. Amen. So you've got to understand something. That's the deception of the enemy. The enemy will tell you if you're able to get it, then you go get it. Y'all know I want a Bentley. Been want one for years. Been talking about it for years. Still ain't got the Bentley. I tithe. I go to church. I teach Bible study. I teach. He could surely give me a Bentley. Now, I could get a Bentley. I could get one. I could get one really good. But PWC going to cut something off. They, they going to cut it off. And I better make sure that thing got a refrigerator and a shower. Because I'm going to be living there, too. And, and, and realistically, I'm serious, I could probably get it and still have a house in PwC, but the problem is it puts me at a, a place where I'm having to make sacrifices that I don't need to make. And then what will it cause me to gain the world and lose my soul? So I can't be jealous if somebody else got it. I'm thanking God because the same God that gave to me will be able to work it out. But you cannot be weary in well-doing for you shall reap in due season if you faint not. So even if it's 20 years, 25, 30, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Just because the Lord ain't answered, he didn't tell you by your flesh to go get it yourself. So understand, those are the things, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life come not from the Father, but it comes from the Word. So you've got to check it by the Word, all right? You can take that scripture down. I appreciate the media ministry. As we continue uh, to go forward, it's all about deception. Brother Docker has got James 1.14. James 1.14. No, I got Revelation. Oh, you got Revelation. Okay. You got, Sister Yaden got James 1.14. Those of y'all that are watching us virtually must be wondering what we're doing. We got live Bible study. There's folks in here. So even though it's not made for TV, it's made for uh, reception. So a lot of times you hear me talking to folks. I, they are really here talking, all right? James 1.14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. All and right. Entice. I don't know what's going on with that mic right there. because we Y'all hear her? In the mic or y'all hear her out loud? All right. I don't know what's going on. It's all good. All right. But each person is what? Tempted when they are dragged away from their own by their own evil desires and enticed. Now, I'm going to make a broad statement. Everybody in here has a capacity or desire to sin in flesh. That's flesh, not spirit. Your flesh is enmity against God. It wants to do different. That's why the, the flesh must be put under, under subjection by the spirit. Because you can't do it by yourself because your flesh on your own wants to do wrong. If loving me is wrong, I don't want to be. Y'all heard that. Amen. Y'all trying to act like you've just been singing Amazing Grace all your life, all right? So your flesh wants to do stuff that your spirit was not designed to do. So understand this in your flesh. That flesh, man, has to be put it under subjection daily. Otherwise, that thing will make you think stuff you don't want to think, say stuff you don't want to think, obtain things that you shouldn't obtain. You've got to keep that thing in order. How do you keep it in order? Somebody tell me one way you keep that flesh in order. How do you keep it? What do you say back there? Prayer and fasting. And in the Word. What else? Through the Holy Spirit. What else? What else? Practice. Continue to do things that are holy. Uh, uh, resist the devil and what he will flee from you so so understand that that's your flesh that's the flesh who wants to do that that's the flesh I told you last Sunday I was on the way to church uh, ready word we had a great time Sunday but I almost let a crazy driver mess me up because I, they, 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 they cut me off on the way here and, and my wife happened to be trailing me and she thought I was going to get road, road rage because she thought the old man was going to come 
So when she saw me speed up, she said, oh, Lord, no, he not going after that woman. Because she cut me off. I mean, seriously, she, she, I mean, she just cut me off, didn't care, whatever. So I said, Let me, and, and, and I used to speed up because I would jump back in front of her and slow down. That's the old me. I got too many tickets. I can't do that no more. So, so, so I, I went up. There. I took a picture of her uh, license tag. And my wife said, I'm so proud of you because a few years ago, you wouldn't be going taking no picture. You'd be trying to run them off the road. That, now, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But I got to put that flesh under subjection because there's repercussions and consequences. Not just she could shoot me. Not just that, that I could get in trouble because most times the, uh, the law don't see the first act. They see the second act. But I've got to understand as I grow as a creature in Christ, I can't fight every battle that comes my way. And when I do that, I can't be deceived to think you got any of y'all ever been in a thing where you say, I got to get even. I got to get them back. Y'all raise your hand if you ever said that before. Uh, that, that, that's, that's rough. That flesh will rise up. Any of y'all ever saw y'all self cussing some folk out? I ain't talking about before save. I'm talking about save right now. And you had to tell that flesh in your tongue, uh-uh, we not going there. We better than that. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. You got to talk to that spirit and tell that spirit, I ain't what I used to be. And I may not be what I want to be, but you're not going to get me to go back where I came from. You're not going to do that. And you only do that by the spirit because the flesh is not going to do that. The flesh is going to let you cut somebody out. The flesh is going to let you cut somebody or run that person off the road that, turn, uh, that, that, that got you. I've seen days, and I'm going to be forever transparent, and I pray that the law officials not working. There's been days. I hope they're not watching. They at work. They're not watching. There's been days where somebody cut me off and I followed them off an exit that I didn't even have to go. That's how bad it is. I mean, that thing was bad. And I ain't talking about before 93. I'm talking about 2003 and 2013. I would follow them. I would follow them for miles to, get to, to be able to... Just crazy. That's deceit. How did that deceive? Notice where that road leads me. First of all, it takes me off my course. Deception always wants to take you off your course. So when you're looking under Jesus, the author and finish of your faith, I ain't talking about driving, I'm talking about real life. You can't be so deceived that you get your focus messed up. I'm going two, three, four, five miles off my course, and, and therefore that person, that, 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 that flesh has got me off my directed path. You got to ask yourself, when does deception bring you off your path? Secondly, I don't know the consequences of who I'm messing with. Because that person can have a, I got a nine, they got a nine. They may get to their nine before I get to my nine. So now they shoot me for chasing them. You've got to also not only about losing focus, about losing your life. Now that's in the physical, but also in the spiritual. What profit a man or woman to gain the world and lose their soul? You've got to stay focused because the deception is you've got to act on the things of the flesh. Just because it comes up don't mean, how many of y'all had to repent within the last 10 days? All of us had to repent or should have repent. Lord, forgive me if I've done anything by thought, word, or deed, knowingly or unknowingly. Because do you realize there's some stuff that you may have done that you don't know? God is righteous. So I ask him to be able to, to forgive me of my sins, that I won't be deceived to think that I'm, uh, the Bible says, think not more highly of yourself than you ought to. You got to be real careful that you don't say, well, you know, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. You remember the rich young ruler, and he was talking to Jesus, what must I do to obtain everlasting life? He said, do this, do this, learn about, he said, I've done that uh, uh, from, from, from a childhood. So, so what else I need to do? He said, he said uh, give away all you got. Take up your cross and follow me. It said that that joker didn't say nothing else to Jesus. He walked away, and it came from a sermon I preached a long time ago. I want it, but it costs too much. And you've got to watch that deception because the enemy will have you so deceived that you'll want to do what is the seed of the flesh rather than what's the fruit of the spirit. Amen, somebody. All right, let's go to Revelation 12, 9. Revelation 12, 9. Revelation 12, 9. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, 
and his angels were cast out with him. Say that one more again. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And that King James Version says, he that deceiveth. That's that deception. Uh, notice what he said, leads the whole world astray. That is his job, and he does it well. He only does it by deception. We go back to Genesis that we dealt with, what was that, Genesis 3, 1 through 4, when we were dealing with that. You will not surely die. So what he does is give you a false reality. That false reality is, I can do this and there's no repercussions. Or I can do this because I'm grown and I'm big and bad enough to do what I want to do. There's always repercussions for you to be able to settle into that deception. When you settle into that deception, you've got to understand there's always consequences. Let's look back at Genesis 3. You don't have to go there, but just, just as a mental note, remember what happened when they ate from the tree that God told them not to eat from. It says, because you have said, remember, God comes back into the garden and said, Adam, where art thou? He says, I hid because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? Because now, because of his relationship had been severed with God, he's no longer able to have that same uh, 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 quantity or that same uh, 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 gathering, that same closeness with God because there's separation. When you get deceived by the enemy, the enemy wants to be able to fracture your relationship with the Father because he knows if he can get you to start to operate in fleshly things, then you get, you, he's hoping you'll get a reprobate mind where you'll start to be against the things of God rather than the things of God. But the conviction of the Holy Spirit will put you back in line. How many of y'all ever been put back in line by the Holy Ghost? And, and that comes through devotion, reading, fasting, praying, hearing the word of God. Faith coming by what? And hearing by what? There is no way you can sit under the word of God and receive the word of God and have a right spirit and there not be conviction and change in your life. There's no way. There's no way. And I've seen it to the point, and you've seen it, all of us have done it, whereas we heard the word of God, knew it was right, and said, I ain't quite got there yet. Lord, help me. You are accountable because you heard the word of God. Once you hear the word of God, you're accountable to this word right here. So you can't say, well, the Lord, no, I ain't got there yet. That's the point of you being there to hear that word. And once you hear it, you remember I used to talk about tattoos all the time. And people would, when I started talking about Leviticus and putting grave and images and talking about the body of the temple of the Holy Ghost and it was bought with a price, and I start talking about tattoos and folk putting it in there, folks say, oh, I don't want to hear it, Pastor. I'm going to get tattooed this weekend. I can't do it. Understand that. I, and again, Please don't nobody email me about no drinking or no tattoos. I'm bringing up the word of God. All right, that's between you and the Lord. But let me tell you something, that once you hear it, you're accountable. You're accountable. And once you're accountable to anything that you, that you hear according to the word of God, if you're saved, your spirit should be in alignment and obedience to the word to the point where the enemy is not going to stop his job of trying to deceive, but you ought to be strong enough in Christ and be able to call on the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me not to be deceived or help me not to be able to go in this path of unrighteousness. And that's, that, that's, that's where your mind gets renewed. So if you don't get renewed in your mind, you will do what you seem good unto you. And you will do that and be satisfied with it rather than what the word of God says. So your heart gets hardened to the point where you start to rationalize everything that the word of God. That's what the enemy wants you to do is start to debate God on what he said. And when you start to do that, what you do is live in a spirit of deception because anything that the word says, you know, it's even now so popular that people say, well, you know, this is this is man written. No, it's inspired by uh, the word of God is through the Holy Spirit. So everything here proves itself from Genesis to Revelation. It reveals, conceals, and opens that we might be able to know it. But it's amazing to me how folks only say it's man-made when they want to get away with sin. But when they want the blessings of the Lord, then they want to be able to quote the word of God. So understand this, is that anything that you go, the enemy is going to try to deceive you and tell you that it's not according to the word of God. Or there's another option. With Christ, there is no other option. It's either the word of God or nothing. It's either you have eternal life or you perish. 
and, and those absolutes and those certainties only come through the spirit of God, but you got to have a renewed mind to understand it. All right. So I want to I want to I wanna, you, you might have to write these things because we may not have them all because I, I just decided and I don't want to put that on AV ministry. It is not their fault. So I want you to know that. But what I want to do is, is give you 12 ways to op- overcome temptation. Uh, overcome. Now, understand, it, it's no good for me to be able to just tell you and not give you a way to get out of it. You got to be able to know it. Uh, Brother Docker, I want you to go to Genesis 39 and 12, associating Philippians 4 8. Rev McCall, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians uh, 3 23. Doc Newton 11, uh, Luke 11 28. We all right? All right. Sister Helen, go to James 5, 16. (laughs) Well, you know, we might not even make it to that, but just hold that for me. All right, let's go for it. First thing, 12 ways to overcome deception or temptation. Avoid it and flee from it. Avoid it and flee from it. Genesis 39 and 12, because we're talking about deception. Because a lot of times we tell folks about the whole that is there, but we don't tell them how to avoid the hole that we're about to go in. All right, uh, Genesis 39, 12, read that for me. Who got that? I got it. All right. And she said, and she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her, her hand and fled and got him out. All right. So you understand that you're dealing with Jacob, uh, 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 Joseph. You're dealing with Joseph. Joseph with the coat of many colors. So understand that he's in Potiphar's house and his wife says, come sleep with me. And that joker ran, left his garments and got up out of there. But he ended up in prison. Now, here's the conflict. If he'd have stayed there, she would have been gratified. But he left and he got condemned by Potiphar and the government. But notice what happened because of his faithfulness. The Lord ended up filling the, pro- the prophecy and ended up putting him the second in command in the whole kingdom just for his obedience and being able not to be deceived by the one that was trying to bring him into evil. Potiphar's wife was a tool to be able to use when really the enemy put, their, put the deception there, but he didn't take it. Amen. So understand, number one, you got to avoid and flee from it. We're talking about temptation and deception. Number two, offer your mind and thoughts to God. You've got to offer your mind and thoughts to God. Offer your mind and thoughts to God, all right? Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. It says, think on those things. What what, were your thought? Any virtue in them, think on these things of good report. You've got to think on things. That's why you got to be careful that you don't have a bunch of negativity around you. And you don't have people trying to pull you into stuff. There's some things that folk can't get you to go in that you used to go in. And even when they try, if you, tell, you become so mature, you don't even think about it. That's how you know you're growing, because some of the stuff you used to would do, you don't even do anymore. Or it comes, it's not that it's not available, but because I'm, grown in, I'm growing up in Christ and I'm becoming more spiritually mature, you can't get me with that small stuff no more because I've grown to this level. Don't mean you're better than anybody else, but I'm better than what I used to be. So that's what you, you're able to overcome deception. So you got to think on these things. Amen. Somebody say, think about it. Think about it. Yeah. Number three. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sister Olsen. Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8. Number three, work on overcoming your selfishness. True love doesn't know selfishness. Because if you love Jesus, you don't belong to yourself. And you are in Christ, and Christ is in you. So you can't be selfish or arrogant and saved at the same time. That's not of the fruit of the Spirit, because you're not going to be selfish. Selfish is, I'm going to do what I want to do and forsake the Lord. That's selfishness. 
Because understand, he's called you to righteousness. He's called us to holiness. Amen. All right. Uh, who has 1 Corinthians 3, 23? All right, read that for me, Reverend. Ye are Christ, and Christ is what? Read that in that mic one. I mean, say that in that mic one time. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God. So that's who you belong to. So I know we wear what would Jesus do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But understand this, you ain't Jesus. But you do belong to him. So you follow his word. Because a lot of times we use that. Now, and don't, please don't nobody write me that. That's number three. Don't email me. Or I did not say no way of what would Jesus do bracelet. But how many know you ain't Jesus? But just because you ain't Jesus don't mean that you cannot have the mind of Christ. The only way you're going to have the mind of Christ is get into the word of God. The best thing is what does the word say about it? So when somebody asks me a question, uh, Bishop, uh, what you say about so-and-so? I said, well, the word says, I don't want to hear what the word says. Well, you don't want to hear my response. Because if you deal with it the way Brian Thompson wants to deal with it, it may not be the right way that God wants to deal with it. But if I have the mind of Christ and I know what the word says, I can regurgitate it. I can be able to give you the word. The best way to be able to explain it to folks is give them the word, then break it down for them according to what the word says. Not say what you say and then try to make the word fit it. Because it'll mess it up every time. So when it says he'll repay evil for evil. So you say, well, I'm going to go ahead and cut them. That way the Lord won't have to do their work. No, that ain't what, the, 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 that, ain't what that, that scripture means. That's why it says lean not into your own understanding. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, you got to know what the word says. How are you going to know uh, how to be able to handle it biblically if you don't know Bible? And you ain't got to be no preacher to know the word of God. We are disciples of Christ. You get enough word in you, some stuff is just so easy for you to walk away from. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, even the things that seem difficult will allow you to be able to say, I want it, but it costs too much. Amen, somebody. Y'all still awake? Y'all still with me? All right. Uh, who else had a scripture? Dr. Newton had a scripture. What was your scripture, Dr. Newton? Luke 11 and 28, Bishop. All right. And, and when he's reading that, uh, we, I want y'all to understand. Anybody have Galatians? Did anybody have Galatians 5, right? Okay, we're good. So uh, I want you to remember within number three, when you overcome selfishness, I want you to write these sub points right before I get to Dr. Newton. Uh, this is still under number three. Expect and be ready for temptation. You're going to have to expect that and be ready for it. That's why you got to guard your heart and guard your mind. Remind yourself of the consequences of sin. Remind yourself of the consequences of sin. I'm still under number three, working on overcoming your selfishness. And also memorize God's word. Remember, I just talked about that. You got to have the word inside of you that you might not be able to sin against God and know what the word says. All right? Read Luke uh, uh, 11, 28, Dr. Newton. Luke 11 and 28 uh, from the Christian Standard Bible. He said, rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those that hear the word of God and keep it. Or one version says, obey it. Same thing. Not only be hearers, but be ye doers of the word. And ain't nothing wrong with knowing the 23rd Psalm. If that's the only scripture you know, I'm sorry. You're going to have some issues. Because even though it is the word of God that's infallible, you need to know what the word of God says in your life. This, this word right here applies to everything that you need to go through in your everything. That is not an issue that you are going through, will go through, or have not gone through that is not in this word right here. And it has a remedy, but we don't want to take the medicine. Keep going. Uh, Dr. Newt, go ahead. Yes, sir. Bishop, I, I just have a comment and uh, an encouragement that uh, most of us are grandparents in here, and uh, some of us have children, and there's a movement uh, with the uh, LGBTQ community where they want to start educating young children at a young age on, on those type of, uh, on that lifestyle, I would say. And I think we should encourage, if you have grandchildren or children, you really need to start talking to them about the word of God because deception is there. And if you can plant a seed in a child at a long, young, young age, they can forget about who God made them and they can start living something that, that uh, is not of God. And that is truly deception. Amen. Y'all hear what he said? You got to watch that 
because that's why it's so important for you to know the word and be able to talk to your children about it. Because now what they're saying is that you should let children live free and be who it is that they are led to be. That ain't what the word of God said. He made ye male and female. Now, we're not even only dealing with homosexuality and heterosexuality. We're also dealing with bestiality. We're dealing with bisexuality. We're dealing with a whole lot of stuff. And when you start saying all of them alphabet, then what they do is the more you expand the alphabet, the more that the child will find themselves and say, this is where I fit. Instead of what the word of God says what you are. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you got to be real careful with that. You can even deal with, uh, with, with getting high. Uh, I, just, I just landed back from uh, Colorado uh, last night. And uh, every block has a marijuana joint on the corner. Everyone. It rolled up on one. We stopped at the light. Reside Nell said, that's one right there. Uh, a church owns that one right there. I said, what? A church owns the, uh, at least the founder of it owns it. The church can't own it legally, but they found it. And they make buku money, so it, it, it's, it's huge out there. And, and this one says, uh, never prepackaged, uh, always fresh. Uh, what did it say? Uh, it said, uh, 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 pick it and we pack it for you. I said, if them things in North Carolina, wouldn't nobody be at work? I said, good, God of mine. But, but this is my point. This is my point. If we say it's all right for us to do that, uh, uh, children, it's just, it's just uh, vegetation. So then the children are going to say, well, if it's just vegetation, I eat vegetables, then it's all right for me to be able to do it. So now you're allowing your child to have a mindset that they have the ability to have a mind-altering substance in their body. And now it's legal for them. But just because it's legal don't mean it's just. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And, and, and this is the thing. If you're going to tell them that it's legal, to be able to smoke marijuana, which may be true, and it may even make it to North Carolina. But what do you say for your house? So if you're going to tell them it's legal and it's okay, then when they show up at 12 years old with a joint, don't say nothing. Because you said it was all right because that's where they fit. And that's with every form of life. That's with everything that goes on in life. I told you before, uh, if somebody comes to our house and they are friends, and they have a boyfriend or girlfriend and they're not married, one's sleeping in one room, one's sleeping in the other. We've always done that. And and, 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 and this point where, you know, Reverend, everybody sleep together. Everybody, you know, do that. You know, so-and-so did that. I did that. You did that before you got. Let me tell you what. When I know the word and I got my children sitting there, if I let them cohabitate, and, and shack up in my house and know they're not married, then when it's time for them to get a girlfriend, then a boyfriend, and both of my, my children have a girlfriend, uh, my, my son has a girlfriend, and I made me make this, this clear, and my daughter has a boyfriend, all right? It's a subliminal message there. So what happens is, if they come, they're going to say, well, can I just let them sleep? Can we sleep? Can't they sleep in my room? And I said, no. Well, you let so-and-so do it. Well, that's different. This is my house. You're my child. You can't change it then. And even with uh, the children being able to have choices in sexuality, that's not a choice. The choice is you are made male or female, and it's a heterosexual uh, uh, covenant through marriage, biblical binding agreement. So when you have that and you tell a child that it's okay, and I know it's tough, and I know I'm getting emails now. I'm going to block you. That's what's going to happen. But this is the point. You go to the word of God. Don't fuss with me. When you allow that, that does not mean we cannot love all people. I want y'all to understand that. Just because you don't agree with it don't mean you, can, you, you get a, a, a pass to hate people. I may love people but hate a lifestyle. Because that's what God hates. But that don't mean I have to be able to condone it. And then I don't give my children the option. To be able to say, well, now, if, if your child comes to you and says that, of course you're going to still love them. Of course you're going to still wrap your arms around them. Of course you should be there for them. But understand that you can still go against the action and the lifestyle. But, but, but what Dr. Newton is talking about, they're starting them early now. 
I'm talking about pre-K, th third, fourth, fifth grade. So by the time they get to high school or junior high, they've already considered an alternative for themselves. And though now it's planted as a seed, which is a, not according to the word of God. So by the time they get grown, there is no pulling them back because that's become their lifestyle. That's their mindset. And we didn't used to have to deal with this, but you notice that the world is going farther away from God through the spirit of deception, and you do whatever you want to do. Amen, somebody. Sister so Dockery. Um, I know I'm going to get some feedback on this. A lot of people like Tyler Perry, mm. but he's a deceiver also. With this Medea thing, with this dress, and our children are looking at this. Some people say, oh, well, he's homeless, and yeah, he's making money, but look at the message he's sending, and also with his gun, but he, he also, to me, sometimes he makes mockery of God when he, the things he said. So it's, it's, this thing has been going on for a long time, sneaking in and sneaking in, and now it's like a snake. And, and you, what Sister Docker is saying is, you got to watch the subliminal distraction. Because while Tyler Perry is a big star, we can't give anybody a pass because of their lifestyle that they've overcome. So if he's wearing a dress, cross, cross dress, and go all the way back to Geraldine with the Flip Wilson show, it's always a subliminal advertisement because it's out there and they're making money off it. And even if it's intentional or unintentional, we've got to speak to it because it's not of God. So you got to be real careful how you, even she talked about, you notice I, I'm real careful about when I say about my, my firearms. I, I use them in a legal vernacular now and how they're used for protection rather than me going after somebody because people listen to me all over the world and they say, well, Pastor Thompson going after somebody with his nine. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? I gotta, you, you got to do that because it's a distraction. And, 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 and when you're in the heat of the moment, how many of you know you make fleshly decisions sometimes rather than godly decisions? And then there comes a regret, all right? Amen. Thank y'all. So, so if, 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 if you're going to get uh, 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 feedback from that, you know what's happening in my email right now, all right? Uh, uh, all right, let, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. I, I, I want to do this. Let, let me go over this right quick. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, well, like you said, um, what's going on right now, right now with our lieutenant, um, what is it? Lieutenant Attorney General, where he's come against uh, the, the books that's being taught to our young children as far as gender and what have you. Now he's coming under fire, and they want him to resign for what he believes. You, you're talking about uh, the, uh, the, the Lieutenant Governor. The Lieutenant Governor, yes. yes. I, and, I, and this thing with the Lieutenant Governor, I, if that's his stance, people are trying to be able to say, uh, those who don't know, the lieutenant governor has come out against homosexuality and persons are being able to promulgate or castigate him because he's talking out against it. He said, I don't care if you remove me. I believe what the word of God said and I'm going I'm to stay with my principles and belief. Now watch this. If you watch where money is and where money goes influence, where influence goes deception. And then what they'll do is they'll get you in a situation where he's making those calls. But I know personally there are persons who are trying to cut off funding from things he wants to do because he's taking that stance. And some of the persons at his own party are saying, you need to shut up because we want our money. He said, I don't care if you don't get no more funding. I'm going to stick with what I got. And then they're using as you serve the people. He said, I serve all the people, and I got my own mind. And as long as I'm governing according to what the Constitution says, it does not say I cannot be able to give according to the word of God as long as I don't bring this Bible in and start to castigate people. So it, it, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Yes, sir. Yep. 
Y'all understand? But you see how much firestorm that gets? And it gets it because it is contrary to what is God's word. Did not say I hate the people. Did not say get them out of school. Did not say kill them or they're going to hell. But he said it should not be taught. So you're going to find out, and it goes back to that original statement, we got to teach our children what we're supposed to teach them in school. And, and, and excuse me, at home. And not depend on the school to do it. I need the school to teach my children reading, writing, arithmetic, and what's that other thing, Sister Oliver, art, the three, four hours, whatever it is. I need them to teach that because I, I can't do science trig or nothing else. And you know I many double negatives I taught. I wasn't good at English either. But I've got to be able to be fluent in the word of God that they may be able to get what they need. All right? Now, did you have a Y'all understand that? So, so gender identification, I need to be able to ask the child when they should be asking the parent. Because legally, they're under 18, they're still under my guardianship. So I should be able, as the parent, to be able to say, this is who this child is. When they get over, they may make their decision, but you give them a too easy way to be able to identify themselves. And you got to understand, that's deception. That's it. It, it leads down other roads. Because if you lend to be able to let somebody be who they want to be, or who they have heard in the media they can be, or who by their friends they can be convinced to be, then they're going to be that. And then they end up confused because they have no basis or no foundation to go on. And that's why it's important that we make sure at home that they're wrong for doing it. And that's why we got to make sure that we protect our rights. But also, if, if, if rights get violated, because I done told you, the Republicans and the Democrats, Independence Tea Party, every one of them, is, every party is ungodly. If you according to the word of God, because all of them sacrifice or compromise something. But you at home don't have to compromise. You're going to have to be able to understand that the Republicans, Democrats, Tea Party, Independents cannot control your house or the mindset of your children or your children's children. So you got to be careful what you teach them. Amen. Or a bit better yet, be careful what you allow them to teach them. Let me go over this real quick because it's time to go. I know people had to go back to work and we want to end on time. Let me go back. Because I misspoke. I didn't give you the wrong thing, but let me number these. Number one was avoid and flee from sin or deception and, and, or, or temptation. Number two, offer your mind and thoughts to God. All right? And, and then number three, work on overcoming your selfishness. Number four, I gave you this, but it's actually number four. Expect and be ready for temptation. Y'all still with me? Number five. Remind yourself of the consequences of sin. Number six, memorize God's word. Y'all still with me? All right. Number, now, number, number, number five, remind yourself of the consequences of sin. Number six, y'all do some shorthand. Just put sin, don't do it, all right? Number six, they're on the screen. That's right. Number six, memorize God's word. Number seven, cultivate a sense of God's presence in prayer. That's Deuteronomy 5.27. Your reference is Deuteronomy 5.27. Number eight, frequent confession. Frequent confession. That's James 5 and 16. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous and the powers, the powerful are effective. 
James 5, 16. That's number eight, frequent confession. Number nine, accountability helps us avoid sin. Accountability. You need an accountability partner. If the person you account that is your accountability partner tells you you can do everything you want to do, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can show you who to sock it to. If, if, you, if, if your accountability partner never says stop or think about it or talks you off the ledge, you need to get a new accountability partner. I just hit somebody in the head. They got mad. Genesis 4 and 9. That is your scripture for accountability helps us. You know, we're dealing with Cain and Abel. Okay, but Genesis 4, 9. All right, number 10, understand who your true enemy is and his tactics. Understand who your true enemy is and his tactics. I think uh, Sister Yagen talked about Tyler Perry. I don't want nobody to, to think that she is saying or I'm saying Tyler Perry. Was that Sister Do No, Sister Dockery said that Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is not our enemy. But what it does, is, what he does is send a spirit of deception. That's a spirit of deception. Just like those things they put in these kids' books. That's a spirit of deception. To let them think that that's the way they're supposed to be. I even heard one where they're talking about they want to take, they, they did not want to put the history of slavery in the book. But you want to put General Robert E. Lee and the Confederacy in the book. How you, it don't make sense. So you, they say, well, that's just going to cause uh, black people to hate white people. No, sometimes you need an understanding, but it has to be taught right. Because you can't put one in while putting the other. Amen, somebody. All right. Uh, uh, number 10, uh, I say, okay, I did that. Number 11, oh, uh, let me do this. On number 10, take this scripture. Ephesians 6, 12 through 13. Ephesians 6, 12 through 13. Number 11, think of your heavenly reward and not just what's going on right now in this life. Think of your heavenly reward and not just of this life. You got to think there's something beyond this. There is something beyond this. All right, y'all still with me? That's James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12. That's under number 11. And lastly, so we can go on time, number 12, receive the Eucharist regularly or receive communion regularly. Communion and Eucharist, that's the same thing. Uh, John 6, 56 through 57. John 6, 56 through 57. And because of COVID, there was a while we didn't go with having communion, but we still commune with God. It is the coming together with God and following his word and keeping his covenant. These are the 12 steps that you are able to, that helps you overcome deception. If you follow these things right now, if you, if you, if you write them and, and you reference them, but you don't believe them and don't read them, it ain't going to help you. But you need help to be able to overcome what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Memorize God's word. That was Luke eleven twenty eight. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We're going to make this available to you, this handout. Even though y'all wrote it, it's better when you write it, you remember it. But we're going to make this handout available to you later on this afternoon on our website for those who are watching virtually. I want to thank you for your time. Brother Powell, if you'll bring me those things right quick. What we're going to do is many of you, our bookstore is back open again. A lot of you have been asking about things that we have. We have the the Free to Be Me mugs. We have the Stolen Moments mask. We have the Free to Be Me journal and the Free to Be Me books. All those are in our bookstore and that we have uh, Bible study note journals and we also, uh, those are the Bible study note journals and then we will also get the, the Simon Temple mask that everybody's been, we've been selling out of. You will get that back. Uh, we will get that back next week. So by next Wednesday, we'll have those masks. We sell out every time. We thank God for each and every one of you being here with us today. The question is, is there somebody who wants to be saved? If you want to be saved, you can be saved. Whatever we talked about today, whether you agree with it or not, one thing you have to agree with is if you don't have Christ in your life, you have nothing. 
Your mind can't be renewed if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So you got to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I spent my, all this time up until this point of my life sinning against you. I confess that you are, 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 are Jesus Christ and you have been raised from the dead. And I declare that you are the son of God and I repent of my sins. And I ask you to be the head of my life and make my heart your home. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you got saved today. Call us at 855-979-9804, 855-979-9804, and we'd be more than glad to talk with you about the wonderful things that God has in store for your life and what it means to be saved. If you don't have a church home and you want to join this church, we'd love to have you at Simon Temple. There's no perfect church, and it won't be perfect anymore once you join it, because it takes one to know one. Ain't no perfect people, but we serve a perfect God. And we'd love for you to be a part of this church and, and be able to grow and be nurtured that we might be able to learn the word of God together. As I said, we are a hospitality church. We are a giving church. We'll be helping five schools this week within the area, dropping off Visa gift cards, backpacks, school supplies, money that we'll be able to give it to because of your generous giving. We're able to go to those principals and say, help whatever kids you need to help and be able to get them meals and get them clothes because I think it's just that important. It's our goal between uh, August and December to spend over $10,000 within our local schools around us and we've adopted seven schools to be able to help them. Continue to give. Uh, our giving platform is on simontemple.com and we thank God for those who have come in and just, uh, they're not even members of the church, but see the need in the community that we might be able to help these young persons in the school and help with things going on with them. Also, our outreach uh, is coming up October 16th, and we need persons to help. Please check with the church office or call Simon Temple at 910-867-1182, 910-867-1182, extension 5, and let us know if you're able to volunteer. But we're going to pack bags on Friday to be able to take out to our community. Simon Temple feeds seven days a week that we might be able to find those that are hungry and be able to give them uh, aid. God bless you. God keep your heaven smile upon you. For all of our visitors who are with us today, any visitors just wrote, wave your hand. All oh, y'all members, praise the Lord. I thank God for each and every one of you. And for those who are virtually, we thank God for, for you being with us. When I say don't email me, you know I'm playing. Um, what I'm saying is, before you contact me, go to the word of God and see what the word of God says. And even if we agree on some issue, disagree on some issue, agree that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, present us faults for a storm and glory, but seemingly great joy to our Father and God. Be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. amen. God bless you. Have a great day.